Pete's Garage. Well, if you're working on any vehicle that has fiberglass parts on it, like my Cobra kit car back here, or a Corvette, you might have a camper, RV, something like that, anything that has fiberglass on it, you may have to do a repair, or you may be doing work to customize it like I am with this car right here. Which means you're going to have to know something about panel bonding adhesives like epoxies, and mixing polyester resins, using fiberglass cloth and fiberglass matting. So we're going to discuss those in this video, show you how to mix it, how to apply it, and uh, how to avoid having a problem with the fiberglass when you, uh, when you put it together or when you use the adhesives. Now, fiberglass, if you buy a, a part or a body or you're working on something, it can be flexible. You can bend fiberglass, but when you do that, you're putting a lot of energy into that fiberglass that's going to want to pop out. It's going to be, it's going to be under stress, so if you don't do it right and you hit a bump, bang, you can lose your, you lose your panel, lose all your work. So let's first talk about panel adhesives and how they're used, the different kinds that are available in sizes, and how you use the gun. And then we'll do some, uh, we'll do some simple repair that I'm doing on the floor pan inside this Cobra. Let's get to work. All right, now obviously, when you're choosing your adhesives, you want to buy the correct adhesive for whatever you're gluing together. This is a great panel bonding adhesive you can buy it anywhere. Summit, Judge, it's all over the place. Even you can buy it on Amazon. This is a 3M product, and the number is 08115. It's a panel bonding adhesive, and it's black. Uh, and this size right here is 200 milliliters, which is 6.75 ounces. You can see how large that is compared to a smaller size, which is 43 milliliters, or about an ounce and a half. Okay, So you can see the size difference. You want to choose the size for the amount you're going to be uh, gluing because this is pretty expensive. A large one like this is like $50, so you don't want to use just a little bit of it and have to waste it. The other thing is they're mixed in different ratios. You can see how the tubes are different sizes. They're different sizes because this is mixed in a larger ratio than that. Same thing with the smaller one. You have two different sized tubes. Now you don't have to worry about mixing or choosing or trying to figure that out because it's done for you. It's done for you with the gun. This gun is just like a caulk gun, and there are different guns. This gun is for the large tube. This gun is for the small tube, okay? Now, these things come with something called a plural mixing tip, and plural meaning more than one. This tip has a series of int intricate channels inside, and when you put this, this uh, n nose on here, or this nozzle, and you put this collar on here, like that, as the epoxy is dispensed, it's going to go through these tubes and it's going to automatically mix the epoxy. So once it comes out the end here, it's ready, it's ready to use. Mixed, just apply it and go. And it's very simple to put in the gun. You can see the gun also has two different sized plungers. One for the big tube, one for the small tube. And it's larger on one side or the other, so it's really hard to put in wrong. All you do is put it in, snap it in like that, and you just squeeze just like you would a caulk gun. And as it pushes down the tubes, it's going to automatically apply, your, apply the epoxy or the panel adhesive. You just lay your bead down, and you're good to go. Clamp it together, and follow the instructions. Now, these adhesives come in different cure times. This particular adhesive, this one here, has a 90-minute work time. So I wanted a lot of time to work with it because I was gluing the entire firewall into this fiberglass body. So I wanted something that had a long work time. You can buy 5-minute, 20-minute. This happens to be number 90-minute. So understand that the time, the use time that you'll have with it, and understand how much you're going to need, like I said, to save money. Like that one, that, that's how that one goes in here. This one is a similar type situation. It's got this plunger in there, and you can see there's two different sizes. And it's where it's just like a caulk gun. There's a button in here that comes back. These little cartridges are neat because these don't have to be installed like that one. These things, you just line up the plunger with the right size. And there's a detent in here. It can't be installed wrong. Like if I want to put it in this way, it won't go in. It can only go in here one way. You put the lock down. You take off the neat of the top of the tip. You put on your plural mixing tip and you go away. You squeeze it like a caulk gun. And there you go. That's how that's used. Now these adhesives are epoxies which means they're not going to dry, they don't dry by air, they dry by chemical reaction. So, if you put something on and you want to speed it up, all you have to do is heat it up. I use a hair dryer a lot. Take a hair dryer, you can heat up the fiberglass or heat up the panel. It'll make it cure faster. Likewise, if, it's, uh, if you want to slow it down, get it cooler, you might want to do it uh, when it's really cold outside. So the colder it is, the slower it'll cure. If you want to speed it up, all you do is add some heat and it'll cure a lot faster. All right, let's go talk about polyester resins. Now when you work with fiberglass, you're going to use two basic forms of fiberglass. That is the, the cloth, this is the fiberglass cloth, 
And this, the weight of this cloth is about six ounces, and it's, it's fairly thick. You can see it's a pretty thick cloth. You can get it very light. A three-quarter ounce fiberglass cloth is going to be the same thickness of like a tissue. And I use that for fine finishing work with a coat of resin over that. We're not doing it here. I'm doing some structural work. So I want something really strong. I want a fiberglass cloth just like this, and I'm going to use fiberglass matting. Fiberglass matting is simply fiberglass and it's a strand and it comes apart real easy. And when you work with this, whether you're working with the fiberglass cloth or the matting, you want to wear a, at least a dust protector over your face because these strands will come out and the last thing you want to do is be breathing those things in because it's going to be in your lungs forever and it will uh, really hurt your lungs. I'm handling this gently so I don't generate any, any um, dust or particles. Also, I'm not wearing any gloves, and I'm not wearing a short sleeve, I'm not wearing a long sleeve shirt, but when you work with this, wear gloves and a long sleeve shirt because these fibers will get in your skin and it will itch like crazy. It's like working with fiberglass insulation. It'll drive you nuts. You get it on your skin, it'll drive you crazy. Now if you do do it and you get itchy, uh, I tell you, all you have to do is take a real hot shower, the pores in your skin will open up and the fiberglass will come out, but you don't want to keep doing that. The way this is used is you usually take the fiberglass cloth and you make your structure or the shape you want, then you take your matting and you build up over it for strength. That's how that, that's how that works. Now when you're doing this, you're going to have to mix some sort of resin, and I'm using just a regular polyester resin, fiberglass resin. It's a polyester. It's a hardener or a resin with a hardener. The resin, the polyester resin, comes in different sizes, small sizes, a quart size, you can buy it in a gallon size, and the, and the uh, MEK peroxide or methyl ethyl ketone, which is the hardener for the resin, is, it'll come with the, with the fiberglass. Now, I have found that when you buy this stuff, if you're going to buy a small container like this, believe it or not, Walmart is the cheapest place to buy it. Uh, this right here was like um, $17 at Walmart, and if you go to one of the big box auto stores, you're going to pay $19, or 22, $19 to $22. So believe it or not, Walmart is a very good source for fi fiberglass resin and Bondo, those kind of things. Now, when I mix it, I use, I have a metal bowl that I use because it makes it very easy. You don't want to use something that it's going to absorb into. You can use glass, whatever you want, but I'd like to, I use this over and over again, and it works great. You just got to clean it out in a mixing stick, and... Um, I'll show you how to mix it in the right ratios. But first, let me show you what I did on one side and what we're going to do on the other side of the body. Now first, let's talk about the problem I had. I had to draw in the body into the firewall. So I have this uh, strap here, this cargo strap underneath the body, and I'm pulling the body together. And what happens is, remember I said fiberglass will bend? What happened is, I had a strap back here, and as I drew this whole body together, as it was doing that, the entire body kind of closed up, so this opening for the door frame kind of just closed up like that, and the rear end of the body lift up about an inch and a half, two inches. So I couldn't do that. And here, I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you on this side. What happened is the floor, you can see there, let me get a better shot. Now what you can see is the floor here, the floor liner isn't close enough to the body. As a matter of fact, I can put my whole finger in there. There's at least a half an inch, if not three quarters of an inch of clearance between there all the way up to the front of the, of the body. So what I couldn't do is I could not pull the body up to the floor because what it did is it bent the whole body. I couldn't do that. Now when you're doing body alignment, it's good to get this thing fixed exactly where you want it because after I took a strap, put a strap in there and squeezed the body together so it matched the floor in front and back, it popped it up in the center here and the hood didn't line up right and it looked terrible. So I had to undo that and get the body to line up right with the hood. I have to have the windshield on there to make sure that line stays straight, this stays straight. So whenever I put a stress on the body like I have here with the strap, I make sure that I'm not bending the body where I'm going to ruin the door opening, the hood alignment, and I'm not going to screw up where the side pipes or the vent is on the side. Let me go look on the, let me show you on the other side where, what I had to do there. So what I did was I cut the lip off. This lip was here just like on the other side. I cut that off and I continued the fiberglass onto the body right here so I have a nice smooth line all the way down and it goes all the way up, up into the corner and it's really hard to see but I have the firewall all joined together like this. So I created this seam. 
So what I'm going to show you how to do is, if you have to do something like this, I'll show you how to create that seam so it's nice and smooth and it's really strong. Now the first thing I'll do is, I'll come over here underneath and I'll cut this edge of this uh, floor off all the way down right along this crease right here. I'm going to cut this off from underneath using an uh, air, air saw. Cut that right off. Now, in order to fix this properly, I can't just put fiberglass right on top of the gel or the fiberglass or the gel coat on the other side. It just won't stick right. So what I have to do is I have to rough this up on either side to make sure I get down to the raw part of the fiberglass, so I got something to really stick to. Now the area is nice and cleaned up and I wiped it down with some lacquer thinner to make sure there's absolutely no dust on there. Now the next thing I have to do is, if I just put fiberglass cloth in here, you can see how it would just sag and would just fall through. So I'm just going to take some duct tape and I'm going to put it on the back here just to provide some backup so that the cloth doesn't sag through when I put it on. And <clears throat> if you pull this off just before the fiberglass dries, it'll come off nice and clean. Or just before the resin dries. Alright, I'm ready to mix my resin here. So you follow the directions and it's usually done by weight. I'm going to be mixing, or I want to repair both of these seams at the same time, so I'm going to mix quite a bit here. You want to try and mix a small amount as possible, as much as you can possibly use in about 20 minutes. Okay. Now mixing your resin, you can estimate how much that is. And this just comes from experience of mixing it. But follow the directions. Three, four. Counting the drops. Of course, drop the cap in there, right? <laughs> Been mixing this all my life. The one time I make a video, I got to drop the cap and the resin. All right, that out of the way. Now mix your resin. And make sure it's thoroughly mixed. So you can take a minute or two to mix that. And you can kind of tell when it's fully mixed because it'll start to turn a darker color. Just regular crappy you know, 30 cent brush from Harbor Freight. I need to get under this under this seam here. So I am going to just take a stick and lift this up a little bit. And I want to get some resin underneath underneath this seam. Just to get some extra holding strength out of the uh, resin. So the resin will act like a glue. And this is, an, is not a structural point, so I'm not worried about too much about the structure here. It's an overlap, and I will get it from underneath. Again, when I take the body off, I can do that from underneath. Now I'm just going to spread an even coat of resin on my surface here. And right now I'm just looking to bond these two together. I'm not trying to establish any strength here yet. So... I will just take a piece of matting, lay it across the seam like that, and 
it'll start to push the resin, uh, push the uh, fiberglass matting into the resin. I'll start on one side and I'll be adding some resin as I go along just to make sure it's fully soaked down and will adhere properly. That's where the strength comes in. We'll go all the way down. Now before I <clears throat> before I bend that over, I'm going to take a self-tapping screw and I'm just going to screw these two together. Just to hold them down. Just like that. Now I can soak the other side of the matting and start to work it in to the corner. Once the, once the fiberglass matting has become saturated, it's fairly easy to bend. You don't want to put too much resin on there. Too much resin is not good. The, the resin itself does not add any strength. The strength is added by the matting. And work as neat as possible. The neater you work up front, the better the finished product will look, obviously. And I will put one more piece of matting across the center here, just for some added strength. Be more of a finished product that way. Now I'll do the same thing for this seam here. And I have my piece of fiberglass cloth cut and I have a bunch of matting ready ready to go. So I'm just going to apply my coat of, of resin here on the top and bottom. Everywhere I'm going to put the resin, the cloth, like that. And I will set my cloth in place. Get it nice and even in there. Now what I can do is I can reach underneath there and hold that, that tape from underneath to make sure that this cloth sits nice and flat. Now I can start to wet this with the resin to get this in place. <clears throat> I'm going to hold it from underneath so that it doesn't get pushed down. Take your time and take some patience. And you have to wear gloves because it will get messy. Now once I have my cloth completely saturated like that, now I can start putting in the matting for strength. I'm going to overlap the joint to make sure that it's strong. And slowly work in the cloth just like that. Or the uh, mat. And I'm just trying to push this in to make sure that it's completely saturated. You don't want too much on there, like I said. Too much, you're just going to puddle up the resin and it'll sit there in a big chunk. and then work in steps, filling it in. The hand underneath
underneath. I do have my hand underneath supporting this, so hold it up. Now I do also want to provide some strength. So I have to put some pieces this way across. So you have your scissors, you always have your scissors handy so you can cut your matting to smaller pieces as you're going along. So I'll put a piece this way. To start to make some strength. Now, as you're working along, if the resin starts to get really thick, as in it's no longer liquidy, it starts to get gummy, stop because it's starting to cure and when you put it on it will no longer stick properly, it won't be strong, so stop if you get to that point. Now as I finish up here, you'll see that I have plenty of fiberglass matting in there to make up some thickness and as I run my, run my finger across I got it nice and flat so I'm sure that'll be nice and strong I don't have too much resin on here just gonna clean it up a little bit I don't have any stray fibers now we can let that dry and we'll see how it works out. Alright here's a look from underneath here's the uh, duct tape I put underneath to make the shape and I'm gonna pull this off the, the uh, resin is just about cured so if I pull this off that should stay just in place. There you go. Now what I can do is when that completely cures I can sand that down and put some cloth across here and some resin and make this nice and smooth so it looks beautiful. Alright now here's the finished seam on top and you can see I built up a lot of the matting on top and I'll get behind that that uh, support there when I take it out. Let's take, let's take it the, the front, front corner here. You see, I needed a lot of support. I needed a lot of support all the way down to the bottom and around the corner because this is where I took that and bent this in to meet the floor. So I had to have a lot of cloth and a lot of matting there to build up a really strong support so that it sticks to this, the sticks to the body, sticks to the floor, and it's nice and strong so it won't deform. So that's working with fiberglass. Remember, safety first, protect your skin, protect your lungs, protect your eyes. Very important. Now, the post office and FedEx just showed up with a bunch of car parts, so I got to go. Thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage.